Les Chances du Moreau, first book, uh, part three of our continuing series, um, section 13, Balcon de l'Autremont. The brother of the leech was walking in the forest slowly. He stopped several times, opening his mouth to speak. But each time his throat contracts, it drives back the abortive effort. At last he cries out, Man, when you come across a dead dog lying on its back against a sluice gate, which will not let it through, do not, as others do, go up and pick out the worms crawling from its swollen belly, examine them in wonder, take out a knife and cut up a large number of them, saying as you do so that one day you will be no more than this dog." What mystery do you seek? Neither I nor the four fin legs of the polar bear in the boreal ocean have been able to solve the problems of life. Take care. Night is approaching. You have been here since morning. What will your family say? And your little sister, seeing you arrive so late? Wash your hands. Go on your way to your home, your bed. Who is that being yonder on the horizon who dares to approach me without fear? In crooked, agitated jumps. And what majesty mingled with serene gentleness. His look, though gentle, is deep. His enormous eyelids play in the breeze and seem to have their own life. I do not know him. When I stare at his monstrous eyes, my body trembles for the first time since I sucked the dry beasts of what is called a mother. There is, as it were, a halo of dazzling light around him. When he spoke, all nature was hushed and felt a great shudder. Since it pleases you to come to me as if drawn by a lover, I shall not resist. How beautiful he is. It hurts me to say it. You must be powerful, for you have a more than human face. Sad as the universe. Beautiful as suicide. I abhor you with all my being, and I would rather, from the beginning of the centuries, have had a serpent coiled about my neck than look on your eyes. What? Is it you? Toad. Fat. Toad, wretched toad, forgive, forgive. What have you come to this earth where the accursed are? What have you done to your viscous, reeking pustules to look so gentle? When you came from on high by command from above, with the mission of consoling the different races of living beings, you struck the earth with the speed of the kite in your long, magnificent flight. I saw you, poor toad. How often did I think of infinity then? and of my own weakness. Another who is superior to those of the earth, I said to myself, by divine will, why should I not be too? To what purpose this injustice in divine decrees? He, the creator, is mad, and yet he is the strongest. His wrath is dreadful. Since you appear to me, monarch of pools and swamps, arrayed in the glory which belongs to God alone, you have in part consoled me, but my stumbling reason found us before such greatness. Who are you? Stay, oh, stay on this earth. Fold your white wings and do not look up with such anxious eyes. If you must leave, let us leave together. The toad sits on his haunches, which so resemble those of men. And while slugs, lice, and snails flee at the sight of their deadly enemy, he speaks in these terms. Maldoror, listen to me. Look at my face, calm as a mirror. I believe my intelligence is equal to yours. One day, you called me the mainstay of your life. Since then, I have not proved unworthy of the confidence you put in me. I am only a simple dweller among the reeds, it is true. But, thanks to my contract with you, taking only what was beautiful in you, my mind has become more exalted. I can speak to you. I have come to you to hold you from the depths. Those who call themselves your friends are struck with consternation when they see you pale and stooping in theaters, in public places, in churches, or with your two sinewy thighs pressed against that horse, which gallops only by night as it carries its phantom master, wrapped in his long black cloak. Abandon these thoughts, which make your heart as empty as the desert. They are more burning than fire. 
Your mind is so sick that you do not realize it. You think you are perfectly normal when you are uttering in the most senseless words, though full of infernal grandeur. Wretch, what have you said since the day of your birth? Oh, sad remnant of an immortal intelligence, which God created with so much love. You have engendered only curses more frightful than the sight of ravenous panthers. For my part, I would prefer to have my eyelids struck down, to have a body without legs or arms, to have murdered a man, than to be you, because I hate you. Why do you have this character which astonishes me? What right do you have to come to this earth and bore scorn on those who live on it, rotten wreck, buoyed up by skepticism? If you do not like it here, you should return to the spheres from where you came. A city dweller should not reside in a village like a foreigner. We know that in space there exists spheres, more spacious than our own, whose spirits have an intelligence of which we cannot even conceive. Well, go there then. Leave this moving ground. Show at last your divine essence which you have kept hidden until now, and as soon as possible direct your rising flight towards your sphere, which we do not at all envy you, proud that you are, for I have not managed to discover whether you are a man or more than a man. Adieu then. Do not hope to encounter the toad again on your way. You have been the cause of my death. I leave for eternity to beg your forgiveness. 14. It is sometimes logical to refer to the appearances of phenomena. The first song finishes here. Do not be severe on him who has yet only been tuning his lyre. It makes such a strange sound. However, if you are impartial, you will already have recognized a strong stamp amid the imperfections. As for me, I shall resume my work to bring out without too great a delay a second song. The end of the 19th century will have its poet. Yet to start with, he must not produce a masterpiece, but follow the law of nature. He was born on American shores, at the mouth of the Plata, where two nations, once rivals, are now striving to surpass each other in moral and material progress. Buenos Aires, the Queen of the South, and Montevideo, the coquette, stretch out their hands in friendship across the silvery waters of the great estuary. But eternal war holds destructive sway over these lands, joyously reaping countless victims. Adieu, old man, think of me if you have read me, and you, young man, do not despair, for whatever you may believe to be the contrary, you have a friend in the vampire. And counting the scab-producing sarcopes might, you will have two friends. <laughs>